So once again, good morning to everyone. And uh, this is the seventh unit of this course, condensed matter physics, and it is the last unit. It is on semiconductors. So in this lecture, we are going to, or in this unit, we are going to cover the following properties which are given general properties and band structure of semiconductors, their carrier statistics, what will happen if we dope uh, any foreign element in a pure semiconductor, and uh, then we will discuss about the PN junctions, equilibrium field and densities in junctions, drift and diffusion currents. So. As we know that uh, semiconductor is uh, a class of material, it is a very important class of material whose electrical conductivity lies between that of metals and insulators. So basically the electrical conductivity of semiconductors varies from 10 to the power minus inverse meter inverse. The SI unit of uh, conductivity is Siemens per centimeter and it is denoted by S over M. The electrical conductivity of semiconductor is, uh, it can be varied and it strongly depends upon temperature. If we lower the temperature of a semiconductor, then uh, its conductivity decreases means it becomes in more and more insulator. So at absolute zero temperature, all the semiconductors are insulated. But uh, the important thing about the semiconductor is that their electrical conductivity can be varied. If you consider the example of a, of a metal, in metal the electron density is fixed. That is 10 to the power 28 uh, electrons per meter cube. So this much is fixed. We cannot change the electron density. Uh, in case of metals and since the conductivity depends upon the uh, uh, upon the electron density therefore uh, we cannot change the conductivity of metal whatever it is it will be there uh, the carrier density is very very small almost negligible and that's uh, why their conductivity is almost uh, zero resistivity is very high so we cannot play with the conductivity of uh, a metal or in insulator. But uh, the intermediate class that is of semiconductor, their conductivity can be varied because we can vary the carrier concentration in, in, in case of semiconductors. Therefore, we can, we can play or we can tailor the electrical conductivity of the semiconductor as desired in any particular application and the change in conductivity can be uh, can be several orders of magnitude so this is one the, elect, the change in electrical conductivity is uh, one of the important uh, property of semiconductor that is utilized in many many electronic devices so the, the devices where semiconductors are used include transistors, you know that, switches, diodes, photovoltaic, thermistors. Uh, thermistors are the devices which uh, change their resistance significantly as a function of variation in temperature. And uh, these semiconductor, semiconductor devices can be used uh, either discreetly or they can be used, uh, we can have a large number of components on, a, on an integrated circuit. So they can be used discreetly or they, they, there can be large number of uh, semiconductor devices fabricated on a very small integrated circuit. So first of all, we would like to discuss how we can form the energy bands from the energy levels. So we would like to see how the bands can form in case of metals, then we will extend our knowledge to the band formation in semiconductors. And we would also like to see how the band gap arises in case of, uh, in case of semiconductors. So for example, if we consider the hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom has ground state wave function as psi 1s. 
and it has Do you agree on this? The ground state wave function of uh, hydrogen atom is uh, some constant times c to the power minus r upon a naught, so it is exponentially varying. When we bring two hydrogen atoms close to each other, so their wave functions begin to begin to overlap. They can overlap in two ways. Either they will overlap in phase when their maximum of the wave function is in one particular direction or they can overlap in the opposite direction that is means out of phase overlap so the previous one when the the two wave functions are pointing in the same direction this is known as in phase overlap and when the wave function are in opposite direction 180 degree uh, with respect to each other so this is known as out of phase overlap so from two uh, hydrogen atoms, we will get hydrogen molecule, H2. And uh, in, that hydro, uh, in that hydrogen molecule, we will have a molecular wave function that will be uh, denoted by psi. The plus sign between the two wave functions because they are matching, they are combining, they are overlapping in phase. If they are overlapping out of phase, then the wave function will be denoted by psi sigma star that will be anti-phase or out of phase overlap. And But we know that wave function is a, just a mathematical construct. It does not have any physical significance. What uh, quantity has the physical significance is the square of square of wave function. So here we have plotted the probability of uh, the wave function in bonding and anti-bonding state. So the bonding state is given by when the wave function overlap in phase and anti-bonding state is given by when the wave function, uh, wave function overlap out of phase. So you can see that in the in the anti-phase probability probability graph, we have one node in between the so in this case the probability of finding the electron between two hydrogen nuclei is zero. And from the knowledge of one dimensional uh, box, one dimensional quantum box, we know that the energy of particle confined in one dimensional box depends upon the number of nodes uh, the more are the mo more is the number of modes more will be the energy if you can visualize that so here in this in this case there is one node so this state will have higher energy and here on the uh, left side graph we don't have any node uh, therefore it will be of lower energy and the two electrons uh, will try to acquire the energy state with lower energy. So this energy, uh, this uh, energy level will be filled. That's why it is known as the bonding state. And the other one is known as anti-bonding state. Uh, anti-bonding state. So this is how uh, the contours of const uh, constant probability in this case we have the finite probability of finding the electrons in between the nuclei that's why they form the bond and the two electrons will uh, will will fill the state will fill this state as per the pauli exclusion principle that means the two electrons will have the uh, opposite spin and in this case the probability of finding the electron in between the nuclei is is zero that's why it is the anti-bonding state with higher energy so then we extend it we we bring three hydrogen atoms together and you see on this graph when the three hydrogen atoms are very far from each other they have infinite distance among themselves so each hydrogen atom has the isolated uh, or single e, a single one s energy level this is what is uh, shown here but when the distance between the three hydrogen atoms start decreasing st 
start decreasing so at a particular distance their wave function begin to overlap and now we have with the three wave functions we have the three possibilities either we can have the wave functions which uh, which overlap like this so this this is one state in which they are uh, overlapping in phase or we can have uh, psi b state that is anti symmetric or out of phase overlapping in which you see the wave functions are 180 degree opposite to each other and the third possibility is third possibility is this one so this is also third one is also symmetric because if you if you draw a line at the uh, at the middle height in the psi b case if you flip the wave function uh, around this line so they will not overlap that's why it is anti symmetric state so this is the these are the three possibilities that we can have if we overlap the wave functions all right so uh, when we square them uh, to calculate the probability so we will get three probabilities and correspondingly we will have three energy states that which are shown here so the electrons uh, this one is the lowest energy state this one is the intermediate energy state and this is the highest energy states so we have three uh, hydrogen atoms each containing one electron two electron will go in the lowest energy state one remaining electron will go in in this energy level and the highest energy level will remain unoccupied so from the three discrete energy levels of three hydrogen atoms now we have the three energy levels which belong to h h3 molecule which belong to the s3 molecule here the energy of this s3 molecule is larger than larger than that of h2 molecule that's why uh, it is unstable and uh, in other words the formation of s3 molecule is lesser probable in comparison to h2 molecule similarly we can see that uh, if we consider the example of lithium lithium atomic number of lithium is three it has got two electrons in the ground state that is represented by e1s and the third electron goes to 2s state so when we have one mole of uh, uh, lithium atoms which are infinitely separated from each other their energy levels are discrete but when we bring one mole of uh, lithium atoms and we we decrease the distance between themselves so their wave functions begin to overlap now you see that this 2s energy level is the outer uh, outer energy level in comparison to 1s so this will there will be more overlapping in between 2s level splitting of 1s level is small because here the overlapping between 1s level in case of lithium is small but 2s level will have significant overlap its wave function it's 0.023 into 10 to the power 23 atoms so when we bring 20, 10 to the power 23 silicon uh, 10 to the power 23 lithium atoms together so each, this 2s level which is single level it will bring it will split into 10 to the power 23 energy levels and this gap is of the order of one few electron volts only one electron volt two electron volt like this and in one or two electron volt energy separation we have 10 to the power 23 energy levels so if we ask what is the separation between two consecutive energy levels it will be uh, one electron volt divided by 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 23 so it will be 10 to the power minus 23 which is very very small we cannot distinguish that's why we say that it is the formation of a band because it looks like continuum it so many so many energy levels are or a large number of energy levels are distributed in a very small energy interval and because it is having uh, the 
2s energy level is having one electron that's why when we fill the two electrons as per the pauli exclusion principle this band would be only half filled this band would be half filled and the remaining band remains empty that's why lithium is a metal if we connect it uh, if either in excited to these empty states or if we connect this uh, lithium metal to the external battery uh, in that case also these electrons can be excited easily excited from the filled state to the empty states and these 2p 3s level they don't have any electrons that's why they form the empty band in case of certain metals we can have the overlapping between uh, between several bands so you can see here and this level denoted by blue dashed line it represents the vacuum level it represents the vacuum level so in the case of lithium this dashed line will represent will represent the fermi energy fermi energy of for lithium for lithium and the energy required to raise the uh, to excite the electron from the fermi level to the vacuum level means we uh, we want to extract the electron from the fermi level to the outside of lithium metal so that quantity is known as work function so different metals have different work functions so this is again what is, what is the single or isolated lithium atom which has discrete energy levels 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p like this and since lithium has three electrons so these three electrons are distributed two goes in the lower energy level and one electron go into into the 2s level when we bring n lithium atoms together so you can see because it is the most inner uh, energy level so it will split very less more splitting will be in the 2s band and because it has only one electron so only half band will be Field. these blue uh, blue circles they represent the electrons and the remaining portion which is shown by the yellow color it remains empty so then we can we can say that this much is the uh, this much is the fermi energy for for lithium so this is represented e is equal to 0 and up the energy level up to which the electron are filled that represents the fermi Fermi energy and the difference between the Fermi energy and the vacuum level is denoted by phi. This is known as the work function of particular metal. So it work function required to raise the electron from Fermi level to the surface of metal. So this can be done in many ways. Either we increase the temperature or we connect the metal to the battery or we can we can uh, have incident light with energy that is greater than the work function of the metal so now if uh, we raise the temperature of uh, a particular metal then you can see the electrons can be excited electrons can be excited from the Fermi level, they now they, these electrons are occupying the states which are uh, which are above the Fermi level. And if we if we plot the density of states as a function of energy, remember in case of uh, semiconductor in case of semiconductors, the energy is shown on the y-axis. So this the x this is x the x-axis represents the density of states, and you. You know that how the density of states for a three-dimensional material varies. It is proportional to under root of energy. So it is a parabolic graph. And uh, this red curve, this sorry, this uh, green curve, it represents the Fermi Dirac distribution function. Because the electrons are distributed. The elect in so we have a tail lamp feature of this
for me drug distribution. This density of state with this Fermi Dirac distribution function and uh, integrate <coughs> it this multiplication, then we will get we will get the number of electrons per unit volume. So this graph this graph represents the number of electrons. These electrons, the blue color, and these dotted uh, electrons. So and it is it is obtained by multiplying multiplying the density of a state with the fermi dirac distribution function and integration over it will give the area enclosed by this curve so this is how the density of a state varies for a three dimensional material it is proportional to the square root of energy and this is fermi dirac distribution function f of e is equal to 1 upon 1 plus exponential e minus ef upon kbt where ef is the fermi energy if we want to calculate if we want to calculate the total number of electrons we can calculate it by using this formula and at uh, is equal to zero kelvin the fermi energy or the electron density will be given by this relation it is very easy to calculate so oh, when we have understood the band formation in case of metals then we can distinguish metal semiconductor and insulator according to the band according to the band gap diagram so for metals we see that either we will have a partially filled band here uh, either we will have a partially filled band or we will have the overlapping between a completely filled band and uh, completely empty band. That's why uh, it, it is a metal because the electrons can easily be excited from the filled state to the uh, to the unfilled states, or the states are available for the electrons to make transition from uh, the energy level below Fermi level to energy level above the Fermi fermi energy this dashed line represents the fermi energy but in case of semiconductor <coughs> what we will have <coughs> we will have uh, the second high the band is completely filled it is known as the valence band and the next band is empty at t is equal to zero helping so there is a separation between between the is very small and for semiconductors it varies from 0 to 3 electron volt and but the same thing happens in case of uh, insulators but this gap is very large this gap is very large uh, more than 3 electron volt it can be 5 electron volt 7 electron volt 12, 12 electron volt like this this energy is so large that at normal valence band to the conduction band that's why the it is an insulator but in case of semiconductor this band gap is uh, the the amplitude of or magnitude of this band gap is very small so under normal working conditions the electrons can be excited from this valence band to the conduction band so this slide has a table that shows the band gap of different uh, materials. I am saying materials because it has diamond also, which is not semiconductor, but it is insulator. It is insulator. So, semiconductor, some are semi metals also, and their band gaps are shown at 0 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. So, for example, you see uh, at 0 Kelvin, the band gap of silicon is 1.17 electron volt. At 300 Kelvin, it is 1.1 electron volt. So, this means that we require 1.1 electron volt of energy if we want to excite uh, electrons from the valence band to the conduction band in case of silicon. Similarly, for germanium, and we have the binary semiconductors also. 
indium antimonide, indium arsenide, indium phosphide, gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide, uh, gallium antimonide, al aluminium antimonide. And you see there is some numbers written I, I, D. So I here represents indirect band semiconductor and D represents direct band semiconductor. We will have a little bit discussion on direct and indirect band semiconductor in a short while. So here you have oh, HDTE whose band gap is negative minus 0 0.30. So it is not a semiconductor, but it is a semi-metal in which the, the valence band is a uh, valence band is higher higher than the conduction band so or in other words the conduction band is lower than the valence band that's why we have a negative band gap and such materials in which we have negative band gap these are known as semi metals in which the the conduction band is at a lower value than the val valence band so now after understanding the band formation in case of metals we can extend this knowledge to the band formation in case of semiconductor and the best example is of silicon if we have an isolated silicon atom its atomic number is 14 so it will have uh, 3s2 3p2 configuration okay so according to this it should make bond only with two silicon atoms but when we bring uh, many silicon atoms together to form a silicon si silicon semiconductor or silicon solid what happens is there is hybridization between 3s and 3p energy levels so one of the 3s electron is excited to excited to this empty p level and this is what we get we get four orbitals in which electrons are distributed each one electron is distributed in this uh, in this hybridized orbital this is for isolated silicon atom but this is the uh, this is the electronic configuration in case of solid silicon when we have large number of silicon atoms close to each other so under that condition sp3 hybridization takes place and we, we will have four orbitals each containing single electron so this is one of such psi hybridized orbital when another hybridized orbital approaches this so they can uh, they can overlap in two ways either they will overlap in phase in phase where the probability of finding the electron in between the two silicon nuclei will increase or they can uh, they can uh, overlap out of phase where the probability of finding the electron in between two silicon nuclei will be zero and as we have understood the bonding state will have the lower energy so therefore the two electrons which have which have been uh, we, the two electrons will try to occupy the bonding state and the anti bonding state will remain empty in a large number of uh, in one mole of silicon uh, silicon uh, silicon solid we will have 10 to the power 23 silicon atoms so the bonding state will form will form a complete band because now we have two electrons so the band would be completely filled and the anti-bonding state will form will convert into will convert into an empty band that is known as conduction band so we have a separation between the valence band and conduction band so valence band we are saying that the electrons are present in the covalent bond between silicon silicon atom if we provide 1.1 electron volt of energy for silicon then these electrons can be excited from valence band to conduction band in other words we have broken us we have broken a covalent bond between two silicon atoms and now the electrons are free to roam in the uh, in the solid silicon so this is what what this picture represents 
एट इज इक्वल टू जीरो कैलविन एट इज इक्वल टू जीरो कैलविन ऑल द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर आर इन द कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड इट रिक्वायर्स टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू मेक कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड so each silicon atom is bonded with four neighboring silicon atoms through covalent bonds and at t is equal to 0 kelvin all the electrons are present in the covalent bond that's and this picture is analogous to that all the electrons are present in the valence band and because there is no free electron all the electrons all the electrons are present in the covalent bond no electron is moving freely that's why the conduction band is empty conduction band is empty and the separation between conduction band and valence band is uh, known as the band gap or forbidden gap in case of metals we talked about we talked about uh, work function and work function we defined as the energy required to excite electron from the fermi level to the vacuum level but in case of uh, semiconductor we don't have any electron at the fermi level that's why the work function is not important for semiconductor the important quantity is this chi chi is defined as electron affinity electron affinity and it is the distance from the bottom of conduction band to the vacuum level that's why it is shown as ec plus chi so we will represent the top of valence band by ev ev represents valence and e energy and the bottom of conduction band is represented by ec ec so for intrinsic semiconductor by intrinsic semiconductor we mean that semiconductor is very pure uh, ultra pure if it has any impurity that is very very small 1 p parts per billion okay so for intrinsic semiconductor the fermi level lies in the forbidden gap and it is shown by a dashed line not continuous line because it is not the actual fermi level as in case of metals rather it is um, it it lies in the forbidden gap and no actual level will lie in the forbidden gap that's why it is forbidden gap that's that's why the fermi level in case of semiconductor is represented by a test line so if we if we have the if we have a semiconductor in which we have valence band that is completely filled and uh, with the separation of energy gap we have conduction band if we have if we have a light incident on the semiconductor and the light has energy that is greater than the band gap of this semiconductor so what it can do it can break a covalent bond between uh, between silicon silicon atoms and it can release the electron from the covalent bond now this electron is free to roam around in the semiconductor so this picture is do the two pictures are similar to each other so here in in terms of valence band and conduction band we say that we have excited one electron from the valence band to the conduction band and if one electron is leaving uh, leaving from the bond now this uh, area will be will be positively charged because uh, before leaving the electron this area was electrically neutral but now we have taken one uh, one negative charge from this area so this area will become positively charged and this positive charge is an, is known as hole so simultaneously in case of intrinsic semiconductor we are producing equal number of electrons and and holes and uh, in semiconductors that the, these two entities uh, take participate uh, they take participation in conduction electrical conduction or thermal conduction and we can see how the holes can par, uh, can uh, participate in the conduction so for example uh, we have one hole generated here like in the previous case this hole is generated here by the incident light and 
the nearby uh, the nearby electron which is present in the bond it sees a vacancy here it sees a positive charge here so it will jump or it will tunnel from this state to this state now this vacancy will be filled this vacancy will be filled and a new vacancy will be created here so you can in terms of energy band diagram you can see earlier the hole was here now it has shifted here and now the hole is here in figure b the nearby electrons again can jump and fill this vacancy so in that case the hole will be created here now the hole has moved here in terms of the energy band diagram and uh, any electron which is which is wandering in the crystal can jump and fill this vacancy so any electron which is in the conduction band it can jump and fill this vacancy again we have the situation here in which all the electrons are present in the covalent bond so that this is the way to understand the motion of electrons and holes in case of semiconductors if we have any semiconductor at finite temperature so we will have we, we, we will have a uh, number of electrons in the valence band and correspondingly equal number of holes in the in the valence band so if i tell you the numbers for silicon silicon has 10 to the power 10 electrons per centimeter cube at room temperature in conduction band germanium has 10 to the power 14 electrons per centimeter cube at room temperature and equal number of holes in the valence band gallium arsenide has 10 to the power 7 electrons per centimeter cube in conduction band at room temperature if we plot the density of states for the conduction electrons and valence electron it will be it will vary proportional to now because it is bent so it will it will vary from uh, e to ec so uh, still it is a parabolic function the density of state will vary like this and when we plot the fermi dirac distribution for electrons it goes like this f of e goes like this and this red line it represents 1 minus f of e f of e is the probability of uh, probability of uh, occupation of energy level e by an electron and 1 minus of f e will represent the probability of not occupation of energy level e by electron or in other words 1 minus f of e will represent the probability of occupation of electrons probability of occupation of electrons so if you multiply the density of a state this blue curve with this blue curve we will get this area which represents the electron density in case of uh, conduction band and this red area the area under this curve red curve represents the whole density in the valence band for intrinsic semiconductor the number of electrons is equal to number of holes therefore the two curves will will uh, represent the same area they will represent the same area another important thing for uh, because now we will have two types of carrier one is the electron the other one is hole so they will have the different uh, drift velocity under the application of uh, electric field so the electron drift velocity is given by VDE drift velocity of electron is equal to mobility of electron times the applied electric field EX similarly the drift velocity for hole is VDH that is equal to mu H mobility of hole times EX electron and hole they will have different mobilities as we will see in the next slide because they have different effective mass and why they have different effective mass because the shape of ek diagram for conduction band and valence band is not the same and if you recall when we define the effective mass 
it depends upon the curvature of the ek diagram that's why the mobility for electron and hole it will be different when we have the two types of uh, carriers which uh, transport current so the electrical conductivity for intrinsic semiconductor is given by the contribution from e electron that is e and mu e and plus the contribution from holes e ph mu h so that is the total conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor this slide shows that uh, uh, the electrons and these are experimentally observed values the electrons and uh, holes have different uh, mobilities uh, and it is these mobilities values are given at room temperature so for example silicon has 1350 centimeter square per volt second electron density uh, electron mobility in case of so in conduction band and hole mobility is 480 centimeter square per volt second so and very large difference is observed in case of gallium arsenide electron mobility is uh, 8000 centimeter square per volt second in conduction band and hole mobility is very small uh, 300 centimeter square per volt second from this you can tell which semiconductor would be better npn or pnp it would be npn because in npn electrons are the uh, majority carriers that's why the transistors made of npn uh, npn transistors are faster than pnp transistors so again we calculate uh, th this we calculate the electron concentration or number of electrons per unit volume in conduction band of a semiconductor that is given by this formula uh, integration of uh, the multiplication of density of states in the conduction band multiplied by the fermi dirac distribution function gives us the electron concentration and in this case the fermi dirac distribution function uh, gets converted to Boltzmann distribution function under the condition that this difference E minus EF is much much greater uh, is uh, much smaller than KBT much smaller than KBT so under that condition Fermi Dirac distribution function gets converted into Boltzmann distribution function so we are saying that in conduction band large number of states are available to a smaller number of electrons we have a class and in class we have four we have 150 bench to sit on so then the students will will sit in a particular fashion so that all the states all the benches will be occupied if two students sit on on a bench then all 50 benches will be occupied so number of benches and number of uh, num number of students are more or less more or less matching but if we have like uh, 10000 benches and only 100 students so no rule is to be followed in that case any student can go, can sit on any bench no rule is to be followed similarly we are saying that at finite temperature in conduction band in conduction band we have large number of large number of states but the number of electrons is smaller in comparison to the available states therefore no specific rule will be followed and the distribution of electrons can be given by the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function, not by the Fermi Dirac distribution. Substitute this, we will get the expression for the electron concentration in case of uh, conduction band. It would be given by n is equal to n c exponential minus e c minus e f upon k b t. So the derivation of this formula you need to do it by yourself 
and it is given in many many books but uh, we are not going to drive it i have just given you the clue how we we can drive it so this is the expression for the electron concentration in case of in case of conduction uh, conduction band this nc this nc is given as 2 into 2 pi m e star k b t h square of h square to the power 3 by 2 it is known as effective density of states at the conduction band h effective density of state at the conduction band h and m e star it represents the effective mass of electron k b is Boltzmann constant t is temperature h is Planck's constant similarly we can calculate we can drive an expression for the whole concentration in, in valence band it is equal to b is equal to nv exponential minus ef minus ev upon kbt where nv is known as effective density of state at the valence band h and its expression is 2 into 2 pi mh star kbt upon h square to the power 3 by 2 to the power 3 by 2 so mh star here is the effective mass of uh, of hole in the valence band now if you multiply the electron concentration with the hole concentration np that would be equal to ni square ni is known as the intrinsic carrier concentration so it would be equal to if you multiply this expression with this expression so we will have nc nv exponential minus because we will ef will be cancelled out and we will have uh, ec minus ev that is the difference of the band gap so it is represented by eg we will have this expression and from this we can calculate we can calculate the band gap of the semiconductor and there is one experiment in in msc i i think where the band gap of semiconductor is calculated using this formula so this no this relation is known as mass action law and it tells the intrinsic carrier concentration in case of a in case of a semiconductor and this mass action law applies in under thermal equilibrium and in in the dark when we don't have any light on the on the semiconductor so in case of intrinsic semiconductor we have understood that number of electrons the electron concentration in the conduction band is equal to the whole concentration in the valence band so if we substitute if we put if we equate n is equal to p means if we equate this expression with this, with this expression n is equal to p so we will get we will get this expression efi that is the intrinsic fermi level in case of semiconductor would be given by ev value of the band gap minus half kbt ln nc over nv if we substitute the expression from the previous slides for nc and nv we will get this expression efi is equal to ev plus half eg minus 3 by 4 kbt ln me star upon mh star so the position of fermi level in case of intrinsic semiconductor depends upon the ratio of effective mass of electron to that of hole if though it is not necessary but if the effective mass of electron and hole are equal then this term would become zero and we will get the, the fermi level intrinsic fermi level for semiconductor at the exactly at the center of the band gap but since the two effective masses are not equal that's why uh, the intrinsic fermi level is not exactly at the center it will be at the center only when the two effective masses are equal so next we discuss the average energy of electron in the conduction band and average energy can be calculated by this formula as you know that how the average of any anything is calculated so this comes out to be 
Tc plus 3 by 2 kVT. This is the average energy available to electron. Ec is the bottom of conduction band plus 3 by 2 kVT. It depends upon temperature. 3 kVT, 3 by 2 kVT is also the average kinetic energy per atom in a monoatomic gas in which the gas atoms move around freely and randomly inside a container. Therefore, the electron in the conduction band behaves as if it were free with a mean kinetic energy equal to 3 by 2 kVT and an effective mass of Me star. We have defined for the Fermi energy, uh, but uh, in, term, in case of semiconductor, the, concept, the Fermi energy is not important, but the change in Fermi energy is important, delta EF, as we will see shortly. Under thermal equilibrium, the change in Fermi energy will be equal to zero. This means that we will have only one Fermi function, one Fermi In any, any semiconductor device, we have two Fermi function. This means we are not under thermal equilibrium. Either we, we have light incident on the device or we have connected it to the external battery. So, but as long as there is thermal equilibrium, we will have only one Fermi function. That's why we will have the change in Fermi value that is equal to zero. So after discussing the intrinsic semiconductor, we can discuss about the formation of n-type semiconductor. Do you have any question to ask? So far, any question? Hello? Anybody having any doubt? Are you there or not? Yes, sir. Yes, no, कुछ तो बोल दिया करो मुझे पता रहेगा भाई हो या नहीं यहाँ वहाँ पे. Okay. So, should we proceed further? Yes, sir. Now we for, we discuss the formation of n type. Semiconductor and n type semiconductor, as you know that if we substitute n to the power nine silicon atoms, it means one billion silicon atoms by one one atom which belongs to the group element. So in group if we have uh, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony like this. So if 10 to the power 9 silicon atoms are replaced by one arsenic atom, so uh, we can see that we can have a significant change in the carrier concentration in the condition band and the conductivity will be uh, very varied significantly. So, because arsenic has five electrons in the outermost cell, so out of these four electrons, four uh, out of these five electrons, four electrons will be used in making bond with four neighboring silicon atoms, and we will have the fifth electron that will roam around this arsenic arsenic ion. We are so we have written uh, As plus As arsenic atom, neutral atom, but uh, since we are taking this electron separately, so this we, we need to write arsenic plus, total entity is arsenic neutral atom. So this fifth electron will roam around this arsenic ion in the same way as the electron moves around the nucleus in case of hydrogen atom. But the difference is that this electron is moving in the matrix of matrix of silicon atoms. That is one difference. Therefore, we need to consider the permittivity of silicon while we calculate the energy of this electron that is circulating around this arsenic atom. And we also calculate 
what is the what is the radius of this electron that is circulating around this arsenic atom so what is the energy of ground state uh, electron in case of hydrogen atom what is the energy of ground state electron in case of hydrogen atom itna hota hai square cross square, 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 square. Hmm? निकालेंगे निकालने के लिए हमें कितना एनर्जी चाहिए एंड व्हाट इज द ग्राउंड स्टेट बोर रेडियस फॉर हाइड्रोजन एटम कितना होता है बोर रेडियस ठीक है सो ये दोनों एनर्जी हमें इस केस में भी निकालना है लेकिन इस केस में हमें निकालने के लिए एक तो हमें डायलैक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट इसमें होगा सिलिकॉन का एप्साइलन सो यहाँ पे इस एक्सप्रेशन में आ गया एप्साइलन और मास की जगह पे क्योंकि द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज नॉट मूविंग इन इन वैक्यूम और स्पेस फ्री स्पेस इट इज मूविंग इन ए सॉलिड सो वी विल वी विल हैव टू रिप्लेस इट्स मास बाय इट्स इफेक्टिव मास सो हेयर इट इज एम ई स्टार Me or Me star it represents the effective mass. So when we substitute in the expression for hydrogen atom, we substitute the mass of electron by its effective mass, and the dielectric constant of silicon is put. We will get the expression for this electron because it is a donor electron, so its energy is represented by E d. It is given by this expression, and its radius is. again given we will have the effective mass not the simply mass and we will have the dielectric constant also if we calculate then for silicon silicon for silicon epsilon is 11.7 if we calculate for arsenic doped in silicon this energy comes out to be 49 milli electron volt yahan pe likha hua hai iska unit milli electron volt 49 milli electron volt in case of hydrogen atom it was 30 kitna zyada tha lekin jab humne arsenic ko dop kiya in case of silicon the energy is 49 milli electron volt 49 milli electron volt and when we substitute phosphorus it is 45 electron volt with the substitution of antimony it is 39 milli electron volt when we take different semiconductor like germanium and we do we do the doping of different atoms so it is 12 milli electron volt when 12.7 9.6 milli electron volt can ek matlab ye hai ki energy has reduced from several electron volts to few milli electron volt यानी कि हमें इतनी एनर्जी चाहिए फ्यू मिली इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट इफ वी वॉन्ट टू आइनाइज दिस आर्सेनिक एटम इफ वी प्रोवाइड फोर्टी नाइन मिली इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट ऑफ एनर्जी देन दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन कैन बी मेड फ्री कैन बी मेड फ्री एंड दिस इज वॉट इज सोन इसका मतलब है कि हमें फ्यू इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट ऑफ एनर्जी चाहिए arsenic atoms will be very closer to the conduction band will be very closer to the conduction band so that's why they are shown by this black uh, symbol they are shown arsenic uh, dopant and because they are contributing electrons to the conduction band they are contributing electrons to the conduction band that's why they are known as the donor levels 
similarly we can calculate the we, we can calculate the radius of this electron and it is it comes out to be almost 51 and strong in case of hydrogen atom it was 0 0.51 electron uh, 51 and strong means the electron uh, the nuclei hydrogen nucleus is having more influence on the on the electron on the hydrogen electron but in this case the and the radius is very large, 51 angstrom. So the arsenic ion is having very less influence on this uh, extra on this fifth. Be made freely very easily. That's why raise the temperature at uh, at t is equal to zero Kelvin. All these electrons will be located at the donor sites. But if we raise the temperature, if we raise the temperature of uh, this semiconductor, these electrons will start leaving these arsenic arsenic atoms or the donor levels and they will go to the conduction vent. And remember, we have not excited any electron from the valence band. We have in the conduction band the electrons donated by these uh, donor atoms. So, we can, in case of N type semiconductor, we can we can increase the uh, if we can increase the conduction electro we can increase the electrons in the conduction band without creating holes in the valence band that's why in case of n type semiconductor we will have large number of electrons and very less number of holes in the valence band so this is how we have calculated the rate Four orbit is increased by epsilon m upon me. So epsilon is the dielectric constant. And for hydrogen atom, it is 0 0.53 angstrom. But if you calculate it, uh, in case of germanium, it is 80 angstrom. And in case of silicon, it is 30 angstrom, very, very large. Two orders of magnitude larger than that of that for hydrogen atom. So these large, these are large large ionic radii so that donor orbits overlap at relatively low donor concentrations compared to the number of host atoms with appreciable orbit overlap and impurity band is formed. Now a band very narrow band form and if we increase if we keep on increasing the doping level then the width of the band increases and uh, at a particular level the width of the band the width of the donor band will be such that it will it will mix or it will the consequences would be different we will have in that case degenerate semiconductors but if we don't have the overlapping between the energy levels of donors and the conduction band then it is known as non-degenerate semiconductors. So, as I told you, uh, that uh, if the donor concentration, N D capital N and D represents the donor concentration is much much greater than the intrinsic carrier concentration. For example. In case of silicon, Ni is 10 to the power 10. And if we have Nd, the donor concentration 10 to the power 14, which so 10 to the power 14 is much, much greater than 10 to the power 10. Then in, in that case, the electron concentration in case of conduction band is roughly equal to the donor concentration, as you can see from this figure. This is just uh, a figure to understand. We have four donors. the conduction band. So in conduction band we have four electrons whose concentration whose number is equal to the number of donor levels. So when Nd is much much greater than Ni we will have N equal to approximately equal to Nd and in that case the whole concentration using this mass action law and P equal to Ni square P would be equal to Ni square divided by Nd 
and since nd is much much greater than ni so p would be very small ni is 10 to the power 10 square would be 10 to the power 20 nd is 10 to the power 14 so p would be 10 to the power 6 holes per centimeter cube so number of electrons in case of n type semiconductor is much much larger than the number of holes and therefore the conductivity for n type semiconductor would be dominated by the electrons contributed by the donor so it will be approximately equal to e times nd mu e similarly for holes we can write the conductivity would be e n a times mu h this is what is done here similar uh, for the p we dope an element from group third group third that is uh, like for example boron and boron has three electrons so three electrons would be used in making covalent bond with three silicon atoms and uh, then we will have one un one bond which is not used in bonding so this uh, in this case we will have a well uh, vacancy we, we will have a vacancy here so this vacancy is represented by it will be represented by hole any neighboring electrons can jump any neighboring electrons can jump and fill this vacancy repair this bond so this hole can uh, in this way it can move around so here in this picture you can see that if one electron goes from any covalent bond and it, it is captured by this valency so this in this case because it is accepting electrons so it will become negatively charged and only very few very very few that's why the acceptor level these are accepting electrons uh, from the valence band so these acceptor levels are very close to the valence band donor levels are close to the conduction band and acceptor levels are very close to the valence band so again we can do the same exercise if we have the acceptor concentration that is much much greater than ni so the whole concentration would be equal to the acceptor uh, concentration and the conductivity for p type semiconductor would be approximately equal to e n a mu h so now with the help of uh, with the help of energy band diagram we can we can understand the intrinsic versus extrinsic semiconductor so the a diagram shows valence band and conduction band and if the effective masses are effective mass of hole is equal to the effective mass of electron so the intrinsic fermi level will lie at the middle of this band gap is equal to the number of holes in case of intrinsic semiconductor n is equal to p but uh, in case of uh, in case of p uh, n type semiconductor the Fermi level move up concentration in the conduction band is more than the whole concentration in the valence band for P type semiconductor the Fermi level is close to the uh, close to the valence band and the number of holes is uh, larger than number of electrons in number of electrons in the conduction band this is this is the same thing so this slide shows the numbers for like band gap electron affinity the the values for effective density of states at conduction band is effective density of state at valence band is uh, the dielectric constant mobility of electron and holes for different semiconductor 
now we can do for example uh, there is one term known as compensation doping compensation doping means that if we have any any type of semiconductor like p type semiconductor we can convert it into n type semiconductor or if we have n type semiconductor we can convert it into into p type semiconductor and this can be done doped in any acceptor can be converted into semiconductor by simply adding donors until the portion So, in that case, the difference N D minus N A should be greater than N I. सार को बुला रहे क्या चले गए भाई सर आए ना तो यूएस के बारे में पूछ लेना एक बार